where Karen and Bo Christensen, a Danish-American couple who met in Germany in 2016. Bo is an airline pilot, and Karen is a freelance advertising creative director. In late 2022, we bought Chateau de la Tuilerie in Martel, France, and are working to make it a bed and breakfast and wedding destination fit for a queen. Welcome to Queen's Escape. So something else that I'm working on is getting our liquor license because when we start doing weddings, uh, we need to be able to serve alcohol. And um, additionally, we want to be able to sell bottles of wine uh, here at the Chateau. So in order to do that, we need to get what's called a license three which is the license that you know like a small restaurant would have to be able to to serve alcohol and what that requires is a two to three day course uh, from that's approved by the government here basically teaching you the responsibilities of serving alcohol and so what i've learned is that these uh, courses are offered in uh, English here and from companies that are accredited. But what I found is they cost about 650 euros and they're offered once every three months. So when you think about our timeline, you know, which is not going to be early next year for um, weddings, but probably more 2025 because of all the work that we need to do on the orangery. Um, then if I can take the liquor license class uh, this year, and then we can apply with that um, authorization for the liquor license after that, we give a little bit of time for the French government to process its paperwork and whatever we have to do to get it, then hopefully we have it in due time for us to open uh, for weddings. It's day two of my alcohol class. We're having our four o'clock break right now and man, it's tiring to sit in front of a computer in school. <laughs> you know, uh, how many hours a day is it? I guess it's, uh, I guess it's eight hours a day. Oh, it's tiring. So in the last three days, I took an online course <clears throat> that is called the Permis d'Exploitation, which is basically a permission or license to run a business that serves alcohol. And it wasn't just all alcohol related um, content, it was also content about uh, health concerns, noise levels, music, fees, labor contracts, you know, how to hire and fire people, and, and a lot of information about running a business. So I wanted to share some of this with you, but I don't really want it to be boring. So I'm not going to go into all of the nitty gritty details of hiring and firing employees because we're not even in that position yet. Um, but what I'll do with you is just do a, a fun little quiz. So in general, they offer this course in France and it is your job as a business owner to inform yourself. And the quote that is used uh, in France is that no one is supposed to ignore the law. So if you get caught for any, anything that violates the laws in France, saying I didn't know isn't a good enough excuse. So no one is supposed to ignore the law. So question number one, you want to uh, protect your business again from being liable. Is homeowner's insurance enough? No, as a business, you also need insurance, which is public liability insurance or establishment insurance. This is because you have to insure your activities. You know, we serve food, for example, so we would need to protect ourselves from food poisoning, just to give an example. So if Bo and I want to build a playground for kids outside on our property, um, first of all, is it wise to post a sign that says only for kids 12 and under? 
No. The best sign would be one that is referring to weight and size because there are kids these days that are quite big. Another advice that our lawyer teachers gave was to make sure that you would say on your sign that the person would need, the children need to be under supervision. And they said, for example, if I looked out the window and I saw that a bunch of kids were playing and they were playing rough and they weren't supervised, should I sit in the house or should I go out and react and, uh, you know, address the situation? The answer for that is I should go out and react. They say in any case, it needs, you need to react as a business owner to show that you are trying to enforce your rules. So always react. If someone, you know, if you have a, a rule that you have in your house for people not to do, no smoking, you have to tell them, hey, no smoking. If you say, hey, no, but no running next to the pool and people are running, you have to say, hey, no running. You have to react. Let's say Bo and I uh, fix up some bicycles and we want to rent bicycles to the public. Someone rents our bicycle and they uh, go biking and uh, the chain comes off and they fall down and they break their leg. Are Bo and I liable? Yes, we are liable because Bo and I fixed up the bicycles ourselves. The rule here is that if you do something and you are not a specialist in that field, you're liable for, for what might happen. So you should always contract with somebody who is a specialist. If we're going to rent bicycles, we need to have our bicycle serviced by a professional because then they accept the responsibility for liability. If we want to, you know, build a ceiling in one of our bedrooms and we DIY it ourselves, we're liable for that. So the best thing you can do is always have a professional that comes in and installs things or creates things for you because then they take on the liability through their contract. It's just like if in France, if you do your own electrical work and then the place burns down because of an electrical problem, you're in trouble because there's insurance is not going to cover it because you didn't use a professional. So that is a very good learning. If someone comes to your establishment and you serve them food and they get food poisoning, are you liable? Yes, you are liable. Now, if you have a contract with a third party to provide your food, uh, it's a different story. Then you have a contract where they have accepted liability. But if I go to the store and I buy ingredients and I come back here and I mix something up and I serve it to a guest, uh, then I am liable. If a guest comes uh, to have a birthday party and they have bought a cake at a local bakery or somewhere or they made it themselves and brought it in and they gave it to me and said, here, keep it in the kitchen and the fridge until it's time for the party. Um, and I bring it out and uh, or they come and get it and then they have the, the party and everybody gets food poisoning from the cake. Am I liable? Yes. I'm liable because I accepted it and brought it into my kitchen. Even though I didn't create it, it came into my kitchen, so I am liable. If it's not your food, then essentially it needs to stay out of your kitchen. Now, if they bring their own cake and they bring it into the dining room and they all have it and get food poisoning, I'm off the hook. If it's not our food, it has to stay out of the kitchen. Of course, if you have a partnership contract with a caterer who's gonna come in and create food in your kitchen, you have a contract. And in that contract, you have to be absolutely sure that the caterer accepts responsibility so that they are liable and not you. Important in the case of when we wanna offer catering for weddings. If I put a sign up in the front of our bed and breakfast that says, we are not liable for the loss or damage of your belongings, does that get me off the hook? No. 
<laughs> you would think it would, but no, it does not. Uh, in fact, uh, I would be liable for a hundred times the room rate of whatever was stolen or lost or damaged within in the hotel room when they stayed. It can get quite expensive. But the warning from the lawyers who taught our course was do not write this, that we are not liable for the theft or damage of things in our establishment because uh, uh, judges do not like to read that. What you can do to protect yourself is within your contract, you can write, uh, we take liability for, let's say, zero to 500 euros worth of your um, items that could be lost and stolen in the room. And then you can have in that contract from 500 to 5,000 euros, we are only liable up to 5,000 euros if it was broken out of your safe. Or if you left it with us in reception and we kept it in our own safe, then we're only liable for a certain amount. So basically you have to write into your contract telling how much you are liable for if something is is uh, is stolen out of the room or is stolen out of uh, the safe or is stolen you know from the safe in the kitchen or sorry in the in the reception and um, you know they will of course check was the safe broken in the room you know there's going to be an investigation into it but you stop yourself from being liable for some 3,000 euro watch that someone maybe had in their room and claims was stolen if you have it in writing in your contract. So you probably notice if you've ever used booking.com, they will make a difference between closed parking and open parking. So um, if you go to a hotel and you want to park your car, you know, maybe you want a locked gate around the parking lot or something like that. So uh, as a bed and breakfast owner, we have to say on a lot of these websites that promote our, our place, whether or not we have closed parking or whether or not we um, have the possibility to park the car around the establishment. Now on our property, it's completely closed. You come off of the main road, you drive down the driveway, and then there are air, and it's an area where you can park. So what should we do? Should we say we have closed parking or should we say that you have the ability to park around the establishment? The answer is that we should never say we have closed parking. Once you say that you have closed parking, you take 100% liability on for anything that happens to that person's car in your area in your parking area you don't even call it a parking area because of liability so if you say you have closed parking then you're responsible basically to have the security to protect um, those cars and the belongings inside so you should always say that people have the possibility to park around the establishment because then that lets you go off of the hook from being liable from anything that happens to someone's car so we've opened a bed and breakfast and someone comes to the door <clears throat> and says, I'd like a room for the night, but maybe I don't really feel like renting a room for the night. You know, I'm, I'm deep into a series on television and I want to, I want to watch my series and I don't want to take them to their room and deal with them and have to do bed and breakfast stuff, you know, and can I say no? No. Uh, once you're open, you cannot say no to business except for legitimate reasons. So if they came to the door and asked for a room and all our rooms were booked, I could say no. We're sorry, we're, we're full. If we have double booked a room and someone comes to the door and then unfortunately someone else is in the room and we had double booked them, uh, are we off the hook? Can we just say, I'm sorry, and send them away? No. We have an obligation to provide a room if booked uh, for the same price. 
So in this case, let's say, uh, you know, we double booked a small room and uh, they come to the door and we realize, oh shoot, um, yeah, that small room, we, booked, we gave it to somebody else. So we do have a big room left. Can we move them to the big room and then just ask them to pay the difference? No, we have to provide them with a room that is equal or greater value to what they booked. Another legitimate reason that we could say no is if someone came to the door and they said, can we have 20 rooms and we only have five rooms? Well, then we can't fulfill that order, obviously. So that would be reasonable. Also, now if a customer comes to the door and they're rude and insulting to you, let's say I have five rooms open and they come to the door and they only want one, but they're rude and insulting and call me names, then I can also refuse service to them. So uh, someone comes to the door and uh, they have booked two weeks in our, our place, let's say. And so their bill for that is, you know, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a, a large bill and they wanna pay me in cash. Can I refuse to accept cash? No, <laughs> you have to accept cash, yeah. You can never, you can never, uh, you can never decline a cash payment unless let's say they, they came and we were selling, you know, breakfast items for some reason we were doing it that way and they ordered a coffee and they want to pay with a 500 euro bill, then we can refuse that. If the customers are coming and we have posted on our website that we have air conditioning and the air conditioning is broken. Are we liable? Yes, we are. You can't post that you have something and then uh, not have it. You have to uh, take steps to, to provide what you've posted that you offer. Uh, if I have on my menu that I offer a, a, a very old, expensive wine for a particular price, I cannot then serve them a cheap wine in its place. Can I set up video cameras to uh, video uh, the common areas of my property? Yes, I can do this. I just need to have posted a sign that says that we are taking video and that has a phone number on it where people can call. Do I get in trouble if I take video without a sign posted? Yes. In fact, it's a 10,000 euro fine if I have not informed the customers and a 20,000 euro fine if I am filming employees. So if a mother and a son are coming to stay in the bed and breakfast and uh, the son is clearly underage um, and they have a, rented a room that has a queen bed or a double bed, am I required to check their IDs to make sure they in fact are family? Yes. I am required because uh, prostitution and trafficking is a problem. And so uh, the best thing to do as advised by the lawyer teaching our class was if they look like they're under 18 to basically just check everybody and to do your best to make the make sure that they are in fact family. If they're, everybody's over 18, it's okay. You don't have to worry about it. If I am having an event at the Chateau and I want to film it for social media, let's say, and I make a post uh, on the invitation or on YouTube and I say, you know, uh, we're going to be filming this event tonight. So if you don't mind being filmed, come on. And if you do mind, stay at home. Is that OK? That's OK. You can do it that way. Alternatively, if you don't announce that it's going to be filmed, then you have to get individual um, releases from them to sign to say it's okay with them. It's almost never okay to film children, so you have to take care. Let's say I'm a guest that goes to a wedding at a bed and breakfast, and, uh, or sorry, at a wedding venue. 
here in France and I have a little bit too much to drink and you know what I don't really want to drive yet home I'm just gonna get in my car and sleep it off a little bit so I get in the driver's side and I roll back uh, you know the seat and I just take a nap if the police come uh, to my window can I be in trouble for driving under the influence yes you can be liable. Best thing to do is to get into the back seat if you need to sleep it off. If a 16 year old teenager comes to have um, drinks uh, with his parents, am I allowed to serve him? No, the age for drinking in France is 18 years old. So you have to be sure never to serve someone even if they're with their parents. There's a lot of misconceptions about that rule, but it is in fact 18. If a mother and a daughter come and they say, we'd like a beer and a Coke, am I liable if the daughter takes the beer and the mother takes the Coke? Yes, I have to be sure that the beer is for the mother and that the Coke is for the daughter. Can pregnant women come and order a beer at your facility? Yes, they can. It is not illegal to drink when you're pregnant in France. Do I have to serve that a pregnant person? No. She can complain if I refuse her and she can uh, pursue me, uh, but uh, basically they have a lot of crime to fight in France and they're not gonna really waste their time pursuing me. Um, and in the end, she would lose the lawsuit. Because if I do decide to serve her uh, because it's not against the law and she has a miscarriage, then she can turn around uh, and sue me and I could be held again with criminal charges. So it's always better just to say no. Can we just put bottles on the table and let everybody serve themselves? No. Uh, that would be illegal. You have to uh, have somebody serving people. So if people come to my uh, wedding event at my chateau and they leave drunk and they get into an accident, am I liable? Yes. Um, but the way, there are ways that we can protect ourselves from this liability and one of them is to have the video cameras up because basically you need to prove that uh, you know when you last saw the person they did not seem drunk so if we have video cameras up that help to sort of prove okay you see the person there there's no signs that they are drunk that's one thing another thing just responsible for us to do would be to try to ensure the transportation of the people that would be attending an event with us you know i, I remember watching on escape to the chateau they always had people bringing you know the guests in these big charter buses and i always thought that's so smart and i bet it is to protect the guests from driving drunk and the lawyer who was teaching our class she said yes that's a really good idea to basically ensure the transport of the guests to and from your establishment because you need to show that you're trying to address the problem and be seen as responsible you know and if you can make a deal with a taxi service or another service to make sure that people um, get home then you're doing something uh, you know to to make yourself to make it safe for your guests, essentially. She gave me a tip. She said that one good thing to do would be to compare the number of bottles that are being um, imbibed to the number of guests that you have. So if you have 60 people and you see that 30 bottles have been drunk, then you need to probably take action. She said that the judges won't punish you hard, essentially, if you are doing things to prevent problems. If I have an employee uh, that is a drunk or does a lot of drugs and regularly, comes to work drunk or high, can I fire them on the basis of drunkenness or being high? No, cannot do that. 
when it comes to addiction, addiction is considered a sickness in France. So you cannot fire someone who is sick. So if you were to fire that person, you should never use this language. You use more language like they are a danger to their coworkers or a danger in this or that situation or a danger using equipment or endangering others. But when you speak to them and when you write things down, you should never, never say anything about drunkenness or addiction because it's a sickness. That said, evidence is kind of the key. If someone comes to your place of business and they're selling alcohol or they're selling more selling drugs uh, to their uh, co-workers, then you can fire them because the, there are very, very stiff fines for drug dealing um, in France, especially, and if it's on your property, you are considered complicit and you will get huge fines. So you can absolutely fire someone for dealing drugs. Is it okay if I have an event and people are gambling for money? No, <laughs> that is highly illegal without a gambling license. So the best thing to do, if there's any gambling or any games, there has to be no money involved. It must be absolutely free. So there are two types of licenses that grant a lot of freedom to be able to serve alcohol to the public. Um, without the requirement of food or opening a restaurant. And those are called license three and license four. License three is essentially the license where you can sell um, alcohol that is up to 18 degrees or 18% alcoholic content. So this is wine, beer, cider, you know, fermented drinks, wine-based aperitifs but not hard liquor. You know, the hard liquor comes with license four and that's up to 45 degrees or 45% um, alcohol. So the license four is the one where you can mostly sell everything. So distilled alcohols, it's wine, beer, distilled alcohols, pastis, rums, you know, lots of, of others, cognac. You basically don't have a limitation when you go to the license four. But the limitation is that in every commune, there are a limited number of license threes and license fours available uh, based on um, every 450 inhabitants, so I understand it. So if we uh, want to purchase a license for the biggest license, alcohol license that you can get for our establishment, um, it's not 100% that it's available. Uh, you know, they could all, all of them that are allowed to be used per the quota for our commune may be in use, in which case we can't, uh, they don't create a new one for you unless one in your, your area isn't used. And now there are some other rules about a transfer of license from another area that I won't get into. Uh, but basically, um, they're a limited number and that's why you have to buy them or rent them from somebody else. And they're quite expensive. I think they said a license for uh, last year in France was supposed to be around 10,000 euros. But a guy in my class, he said, actually, it was more like 20,000. So it's no joke to have these, these licenses. So we talked a lot about operational obligations. And one of the questions was, if I serve a hot dish and the customer complains that it's not hot enough, do I have to replace it with a dish that is hotter? Yes, I do. <laughs> If they don't think it's hot enough, then you are required to uh, replace it. Say someone buys a bottle of wine. Is it okay for me to open, open the wine in the kitchen and then come out and, uh, and give it to them? No, I have to open the wine in front of the consumer. Let's say we offer a lunch. Uh, am I allowed to charge the customers for bread, water, and condiments? No, 
that you're not allowed to charge for these things. Uh, in fact, um, if they ask for a water at the table, a jug of water, you cannot charge for it if it's served at the table. Um, one of the people participating in my uh, class, she said, well, a lot of restaurants actually, they do that and they're not supposed to. They, they kind of get the vacation guests. If I don't want to accept checks, do I have to post a sign that says, I don't accept checks? Yes, I do. I have, it's the best thing The the lawyer who was teaching our course, she said the best thing to do is show pictures. So for everything you don't do, post a picture. For everything you do do, post a picture because, you know, um, or have it in a contract or written, but she said pictures are the best things this day and age. So if you have a picture of a check, no checks accepted, and you have a picture of, you know, the credit cards that you accept, then you're, you're in the best position. Do I have to display that I don't accept traveler's checks? No, I don't have to display that. I can just not accept traveler's checks. In fact, a couple came the other day and they wanted a room and they uh, told me, here, we'll pay you with traveler's checks. And I honestly didn't know how to accept them. So I said, I, I can't, uh, I don't, I can't accept these. And I'm lucky, you know, because it's, I'm not required to accept traveler's checks. If someone rents a room and they, pull out a big bag of change and they want to pay me uh, with a hundred coins, uh, do I have to accept that? No. If they want to pay me with 49 coins, I have to accept it. But if they go beyond 50 coins, I can refuse that payment. There are 14 allergens uh, that are a concern for people officially in France. Do I have to alert my customers if I use any of these allergens? Yes, I do, as a matter of fact. Now, I don't have to uh, display it if we, we don't have a menu, for example. So if I had a menu, it would be wise of me to put it on the menu to say which of the allergens are used in which foods. You can use icons and that sort of thing, but you don't have to. You can do it in an indirect way where um, you say basically to them, if you wanna see a list of the allergens that are used in our foods, just ask. And then you have to have the, that list on hand to be able to share with people. So you need to be able to have um, the information. So in France, you have to get permission to play music um, at a loud level. So let's say, <clears throat> you know, you have nobody living around you and you have an establishment where you're playing music at a loud level, you know, and a neighbor is building a house next to you. And this is after you've already been open for some time. Can they sue you um, for the noise? Yes, they can. <laughs> And it's actually a recent decision, you know, that if someone was moving into your area, you know, and you're playing loud music, they would be able to, to sue you, even if you had a license for amplified music. When it comes to fire safety, am I required as a bed and breakfast owner to have my fire extinguishers checked um, annually by a technician? Yes, I am. I am liable for that. Uh, sometimes it's not every year, sometimes it's every two years, but I believe it, it depends on the rule in your area. Am I responsible to have a company mobile phone that's always charged so that I can call the fire company in case there's a fire? Yes, I am responsible to have a company mobile phone that is always charged. They used to have landlines, uh, but in case of a fire, sometimes that connection would be um, broken. So now it's a, a mobile phone. There's two different companies in France uh, that collect money for 
from businesses that want to play music in their establishments. So me as a bed and breakfast owner, small five rooms, do I have to pay these companies if I want to play music in my establishment? Yes, I do. What if I'm playing music in the kitchen and it just so happens that the customers can hear it in the dining room, do I still have to pay? Yes, I am still required to play. pay. <laughs> What if Bo is playing his guitar and he and his daughter uh, make some music and we record it and we play it in the dining room? Do I still have to pay? Yes, I'm supposed to still pay if I play music in my establishment. Uh, the smaller your establishment, the, the, small, the harder it is to prosecute, um, but you know, you, you don't always have to pay both of those um, two companies in, in all of these cases, but uh, you are supposed to, to pay, essentially. And it's how much you pay is based on the size um, of your company. So Bo and I, we have a no pet policy. Can we refuse guide dogs? No, we cannot. A guide dog is not considered a dog. At that point, it becomes um, more <laughs> than a dog, so we, we cannot refuse that. They must be accepted. If I allow a customer to bring their dog into my dining room and it bites somebody, is the customer liable or am I and the customer liable? I and the customer are liable. We accept 50% responsibility and liability when we allow people to bring animals into our establishment. If I have some young people attending a wedding and we are serving alcohol, can I ask them for their ID? No. And that's a little bit of a trick question because what I need to ask them for is an official identity paper with photographs. So I just can't use the word ID because I'm not the police. It's strange, it's a really strange uh, rule, but I have to ask them for an official identity paper, official identity paper with photographs. And that can include their social security card. If I want to hire somebody, uh, can I make up their title and their list of job descriptions and decide for myself what I want to pay them? No. <laughs> In that case, I would need to consult for a labor contract, what's called the Conventions Collective. And this gives a list of existing jobs. Uh, you cannot create your own. And not only that, it gives a list, it tells you exactly what the minimum salary must be. You don't get to choose your own, your own salary for them. You can pay them more, you can't pay them less. If I get sick, can I have my daughter to stand in for me while I'm sick? No. Basically, I cannot employ anybody unless I have declared them as an employee. So if I've already declared my daughter as an employee, then she can stand in for me. <clears throat> but if I haven't, um, then I am not officially allowed to employ them. If I write into my contract that anyone who stays past checkout time, which our checkout time is at 10 in the morning, if I write into my contract that anybody who stays past checkout time has to pay for another night's um, booking, can I do that? In fact, I can do that. If it's in my rules and in its contract that my customers have signed and they stay till 10.01, 10.02, they in fact are liable uh, to pay me for another night. I mentioned that one because it's a big problem we have with people checking out late. You know, they don't pay attention no matter how much I remind them, uh, you know, when checkout time is. And it was something for me to learn that we could charge them. But I have to say, 
It's not something I would want to have to uh, collect on. You know, it would be really difficult. Um, most of our people, they pay in advance. So even how we would collect on that afterwards, I'm not even sure. Um, but I just wouldn't want to do it because I think it would cause a lot of bad will. So it might be that we just, you know, put this in the contract and point it out to people because people tend to pay attention when there's money consequences. And so just seeing it, they might be more liable to follow the rules. And as for collecting on it, I just really, I just wouldn't want to have to be the one to do that. So that was just, just a little taste of everything we, we learned. I learned a lot that I didn't know. And, you know, I would talk to Bo after every day part, you know, we had morning session and afternoon sessions. Um, and after every session, I would call Bo and I would kind of go through my notes with him and talk to him about everything that I learned and things I didn't know. And, you know, we would uh, agree, okay, well, you know, this is important to know for us and this is something we need to change. And um, it, it only made us uh, smarter and uh, wiser and, and uh, better to run our business uh, in a way where both we and our customers are protected. So it was great. <laughs>